Today's recipe is a savoury plat and we are looking at using puff pastry um, as a main base and wrap around for um, a range of fillings. Those fillings can basically be anything that you would normally put onto a pizza. Um, we're going to have today, I've got the a pizza sauce, pre-made. I've also got mushrooms, peppers, spring onions, olives. I've got some cooked chicken and some grated cheese. And then obviously I've got the ready rolled puff pastry. You can get the block and then roll it out. You just need to be rolling it out to approximately an A4 piece of paper. So first of all, I'm going to prepare the ingredients. Biggest thing about the ingredients today is dicing them small because they do need to be scattered and they are a filling. So we don't want them too large and then they could rip through the pastry. So mushrooms, I'm just going to use bridge hold and dice those. Spring onion will be about getting the outer layer as we have done in previous recipes. Removing that and then topping and tailing before slicing finely. So picking off the root, taking off where it goes soft and hollow and then just slicing through using claw grip all the way along. Pepper, similar again, cutting in half to remove the stalk to start with and then slicing and dicing as well. So pulling out the stalk like so, long thin strips all the way along and then we are just going to dice those into small cubes. Olives I will cut in half and the ham I will do the same. So once all of these have been prepared and ready, I'll then show you how we construct the savoury plat. Now that all of the ingredients are prepared for the filling, I'm going to preheat the oven. It's on to gas mark six, 200 degrees today, and we need a rectangular baking tray. So I'm going to put my ingredients to one side, and I'm going to open up my greaseproof um, paper wrap puff pastry. So the grease proof paper is really useful, it can be used to go into the oven as well. So what we want to do is open it so that it is portrait towards us and we are looking at the, the centre third. So we only want to be working with the centre third for all the fillings because then we need to use the outer edges to create the plat effect. So with the tomato sauce, I'm just going to pour that down the center, leaving the edges slightly clear. So we want to be able to fold that over. And then with the back of a spoon or a knife, just spread that out. And that gives us our guidance of where to put the rest of the ingredients. So we're gonna put some cheese first, and we will use cheese on the top of all the ingredients as well. So we add cheese to the bottom, just to cover where the tomato sauce is. And then we're gonna add on all of the fillings. So I've, I've got obviously a mixture of uh, fillings. You can use whatever fillings you want to use. I'm just going to put mushrooms at one end because not everybody likes mushrooms in my household. Peppers all the way along. And you can really pack this up as long as it can stay within that center third. You can put so many different ingredients on it and have it so it's really full. So it turns out it doesn't look anything like, but it, it's similar to a calzone pizza in that everything is on the inside, but instead of using a bread dough, we're using pastry. So it gives you another element of um, different carbohydrate type ingredients to use. Obviously, puff pastry is used with quite a lot of butter, so it's high in fat as well, so it's not something to have every day. It's a nice treat, and it's a really effective dinner or lunch to have um, as a family. So now I've got all those ingredients, created a nice dough. I'm going to just put a little bit more cheese over the top. And that is the filling done. So what I'm gonna do now is go on to a close up and I'm gonna show you what you've got to do. It's quite intricate. So I'm going to show you what you do with the pastry to be able to seal it, to get it all the way through. And obviously we're going to brush it at the end. You can do it with some oil, some milk, or if you want to get a nice shine on it, you can do an egg wash as well. Right, I'll show you the next. So now it's on a close up, just one extra ingredient which you can add. You can either use oregano or dried mixed herbs. You could even put fresh basil or parsley into this. But I'm just adding some herbs to that just to help with the flavors. 
Then, what you're going to do is you're going to leave approximately a centimetre difference and we are going to cut up to the ingredients in centimetre, half, one and a half centimetre, up to strips all the way along on one side and then we're going to repeat and do the other on the other side. It's really good that we've got the greaseproof paper for this because obviously it protects your work surface as well with you using a sharp knife. So all the way along, keeping as even as you can with the one on the other side so that the cuts match all the way along. Now, what we're going to do now is we're going to bend the top over and that will create a seal. And then with the first cut, we're going to fold it across, coming downwards and across, going downwards. And then we're going to alternate each one, bringing it forwards all the time. So we're always trying to pull it downwards to create this plait effect on the um, finish. You will get some ingredients oozing out of the side, but there should be a little bit of an overlap just to hold the majority of them in. So you're pulling down with each one and creating, as you can see hopefully on there, a little bit of a plait pattern. So if they slightly overlap, the pastry is quite sticky, so sealing as such, as long as they're pressed down against each other, they should stay. And then obviously we will add that glaze, as I said, over the top. So we keep going all the way along, and then we're going to use the greaseproof paper to basically pick this up, because obviously trying to pick something up like this is quite delicate, so we can use the greaseproof paper to do that. So once I've got this all the way through and completed, I will show you how to transport it onto a baking tray. And so now that the pastry um, is complete, so the plat is finished, what we're going to do is just lift the greaseproof paper as firmly as we can and place it onto a baking tray and then all you're going to do is just put the greaseproof paper underneath so that it doesn't hang out at the side of the baking tray and then that can go into the oven with the addition of a glaze over the top so I'm just going to brush it now just using milk with mine obviously eggs quite in demand at the moment so you can use an egg the egg just gives a shiny effect the milk will give a matte effect but they'll both help with the browning of the pastry so pop that all the way along nice glaze and then that's going to go in the oven now for about 16 to 18 minutes just until golden brown and obviously with it being puff pastry it will rise as well so i'll show you what it looks like when it comes out savoury plat is now ready to take out. It's been in the oven for about 19 or 20 minutes uh, just to get that really golden colour. So when I checked it at 18 minutes, it just needed that couple more minutes longer just to give it that really nice crispy coating. So oven gloves off, removing the plat and you can see there a lovely golden brown plat. So I will present that now, photograph it and add that onto the end of 